thing. I need your Coinbase account number. Hey, Thomas, give me a second. Let me just talk to my husband real fast. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's just, um, what you, what you it's need? actually under my husband's name. Wait, wait. Let me, let give me, me a second, give me a second. Let me take you. Thomas, listen, so me this Thomas guy, have... I've been talking to him for a couple of days. And um, he said if I transfer $2,000 in Bitcoin, in like two to 10 days, he could make it to seven to $10,000. So I gave him the checking account number, but for him to transfer it over to Coinbase, he needs your account number information. You give him what? The account number. You give him our account number? Like, Walid, he's legit. I looked him up. But he's legit, but he's legit. He lives in Nebraska. Thomas from Nebraska. But Thomas, but Thomas, give me a second, please. Did you give him an account number? Walid, Did you give him our account? Yes, I gave him the checking account number. Look at that. Walid, hold on. Walid, it's legit. I've seen his file profile. Sakri al-khat. Walid. Sakri. وليد صلي يومين احكي معاه اتس لجيت هي تامس سكر الخط انا كيف يو خاب عاد دايم 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 that's not good Evergrande is more than just your average property developer. In fact, it's the second largest in China today. It employs over 200,000 people, but it's also $300 billion in debt. How did this happen? Why is it affecting the lives of average people in China? And why should you care about it? The bankruptcy of the Lehman Brothers happened on September 15th, 2008. That was the climax of the subprime mortgage crisis in which the housing market, the financial market, everything essentially collapsed. A company in China called Evergrande is kind of having a Lehman moment. Evergrande is one of the world's most valuable real estate companies. They have stopped paying their employees and they have $300 billion in liabilities, the size of GDPs of countries like Ireland and Denmark, etc. That's how much liabilities that they have. Debt, so things that are going to mature soon enough, are about 100 billion. But regardless, their debt is under a lot of pressure. They over leveraged on real estate properties in an attempt to grow their real estate empire. Now they're entering technical default. And this default on debt and value of more than what happened during Lehman Brothers. Not all of it's going to implode right away, but it's a lot of money tied up in this company. Brock, Vanguard, etc. all have exposure to. So the United States is exposed to a certain extent to Evergrande. But the big issue here is two things. Number one is they haven't paid their employees. And so employees have been protesting outside because number one, they're not getting paid, but number two, a lot of their wealth is tied up in the company. And so they're kind of freaking out, not only about losing their jobs, but also losing their savings. And they're in increasing trouble because it's like, okay, their bonds were just lowered. So everybody's like, hey, you're not credit worthy. We don't really want to loan to you. We won't give you access to a certain market. And the big question is, will China bail them out? Will they have sort of a Lehman Brothers situation on their hands? The collapse of Evergrande is rattling the markets. China's largest property developer, Evergrande, is on the brink of collapse. How did we get here? Evergrande is now under a debt of over $300 billion. Agencies have downgraded the firm and the stock has plunged 80% so far this year. What do they do? They own a ton of real estate projects all over China, from electric vehicles, healthcare, consumer products, video and television, and even the theme park. Who's affected? Banks, home buyers, investors, suppliers. Look at the effect it's having on the market. S&P is down almost 2%. So what do you do? Buy the dip or sit on the sidelines to wait it out? Great question. What do you do if the stock market crashes? Well, here's why it's actually nothing to worry about as long as you're a long-term investor like me. So as long as you're investing long-term, which is over a year, you're going to see your stock go up and down throughout the days. And during the event of a crash, yeah, it's going to go down a lot. But guess what? Since you're a long-term investor, it's going to go up a lot too. This is why with crashes, you have nothing to worry about. And instead of being afraid, you should use it as an opportunity to buy the stocks you want at a discounted price. I got it. I got it. I just got it. 